Hi, I'm Sally from Harrogate Mumbler, and we're here again with Berwyn Solicitors to talk about, this time, all things maternity leave, redundancy and employment rights. And I'm here with Mike Patterson. Mike, would you mind telling us a little bit about what you do within Berwyn's? Sure, thanks Sally for having me today. Um, I say, I, my name's Mike, I'm head of the employment team here at Berwyn's. Um, basically, my day-to-day is advising individuals and businesses on all things um, employment and people related right. from recruitment through to contracts, day-to-day, dismissals and tribunals. Interesting. Well, as I'm sure you're not surprised, a lot of the questions that we've had in today are particularly around maternity rights. Um, so if it's all right with you, we'll just fire away and we'll get started on some yep. of the questions that we've got. Sounds good. Um, I think initially, it would be interesting to know what maternity leave are employees entitled to? Okay, uh, well, maternity leave itself is a day one right for all employees. Right. Um, in terms of how long that can be, it can be up to 52 weeks. Um, it's split into two sort of six month periods. Um, the first being ordinary maternity leave, mm-hmm. which is 26 weeks. And then there's an option to extend for the remaining 26 weeks, which is called additional maternity leave. Right. I suppose the big question is, is do you get paid for maternity leave? Not always. No. Um, payment in terms of um, during that period is what's called maternity pay. Mm-hmm. Um, commonly known as statutory maternity pay and there are certain conditions that you need to satisfy as an employee before you're entitled to that so not everybody's eligible. Right well that's interesting and so in the normal course of pregnancy obviously there are scans and doctor's appointments are employees entitled to time off to attend appointments like that? Yeah it's a common query that people ask Um, the short answer is yes all employees are entitled to pay time off. Yeah, and that can be during working hours. What I'd suggest, obviously, if you've got scans and appointments booked, just make sure you speak to your employer. Um, Also provide them with evidence, just the appointment card, the date and things like that. All right. And what about if you're the partner or carer or um, birth partner of somebody else who's employed? So, for example, if you were a husband or a um, a partner, are you also entitled to time off for appointments? Yeah, you are entitled to time off. And obviously, it's a really important time for partners of... um, you know, pregnant pregnant moms to be, um, they are entitled to time off. Usually it would be unpaid. Um, Again, as I say, from the point of view of the partner, it could be the the husband, partner, or dad to be. Again, just for that individual to speak to their employer, let them know the situation, and obviously provide maybe evidence of the appointment itself. That makes sense. And so when a person is on maternity um, leave and they're receiving maternity pay, when does that stop? When does it stop? Well, the maternity pay, providing you're eligible to receive that, um, it runs for a period from a from a government or statutory point of view, it runs for a period of 39 weeks in total. But obviously it can depend um, on your own contract of employment or your employer might have a, a sort of more enhanced or more favourable maternity pay policy, so it's worth checking that. And presumably that will be in the contract when you started or you could request it from HR? Yeah, absolutely. Usually what um, employers will have to set out in the contract or at least policies and procedures, what the maternity policy would be. Mm -hmm. As I say, the baseline usually would be the the statutory or the government guidance, but often employers might offer, you know, an enhanced uh, enhanced amount during that time. That's interesting to know. Um, What is maternity allowance? Um, Good question. As I say, not all employees are entitled to maternity pay. Maternity allowance um, will apply where, for example, someone doesn't have the required length of service. So just to sort of clarify, maternity pay, one of the conditions about it is you have to be employed for at least 26 weeks. Different from maternity leave because that is a day one right everyone's entitled to, but Mm -hmm. you have to be employed up to a certain date for at least 26 weeks and again certain conditions. Um, you also have to be paying a certain amount um, with regards to national insurance. So where maternity allowance kicks in is usually where that employee might not have that length of service or they might not necessarily pay that amount of um, uh, national insurance contributions. Right. So it is uh, a payment made by one of the government bodies and sort of job centre would pay that amount. So I guess just to get it clear in my head is it's either maternity pay or maternity allowance depending on where you yeah, qualify. Yeah, that's right. Right, and so does that also apply them to self-employed people? Yeah, another good question. Um, unfortunately not, on the whole it doesn't. Um, by definition you have to be an employee or potentially a worker to be eligible for maternity pay. Mm-hmm. However, if you are a 
maybe a company or company director and you pay your, or tax yourself in the same way as an employee would be with regards to your pay, you could be eligible for maternity pay of some sort. But on the, on the usual norm would be no, if you're self-employed, mm -hmm. not. Okay. And so what about parental leave and how does that differ from maternity leave? Parental leave itself um, is, is different from maternity leave, um, as is adoption leave and shared parental leave. Parental leave itself is unpaid time off. Right. Um, it is eligible, you, everybody is eligible for that. And it, it's calculated, it is time off obviously to look after your child up to the age of five, or if they are um, disabled, it could be up to the age of 18. Mm -hmm. Usually it would be taken in blocks or weeks, um, again, with agreement of your employer. Right. And so, I guess the final question in this section is what happens to um, annual leave, accrued annual leave? Do you continue to accrue it when you're off on maternity leave and how does that work? Yeah, really common question asked about because obviously whilst you're still employed on maternity leave, you're an employee and you still accrue your, your normal holiday entitlement. Right. So during that period of time that you're on maternity leave, whether that be for the ordinary maternity leave for that first six months or the whole year, you will still accrue your holiday. Right. as you would have done had you been at work and so, employed. Theoretically then, if you had a full um, 52 weeks of maternity leave, and if you had statutory five weeks holiday, you could potentially have another five weeks on the end of your maternity leave. Yeah, period. potentially. It's a really good way because obviously your maternity pay will only last for a certain period mm -hmm. of time, as we mentioned, usually up to that 39 weeks. Um, and then you're back with no income at all. Mm. And commonly we would advise, you know, individuals could probably take that accrued holiday, speak to their employer and say, look, I want to take it. During that time, get paid in accordance with the contract. So there is income coming in. So it's a good way of getting paid for that mm. remaining maternity leave period. That's interesting. Um, so a couple more questions that we've had in from our mumblers. Um, this one here says, the last three months of maternity leave is unpaid. Am I allowed to get another job for those three months so that I can earn some money? Yeah, it's an interesting question that because I think it will very much depend on what's in your contract of employment. Because mm -hmm. again, if you think about your contract of employment, you know, again, that may state or stipulate that you cannot work for anybody else no. during that time. Remember that you're still an employee. Again, obviously, we've just touched on the pay will run out. You want some income. If you are going to do that or you're thinking of doing that, I would just recommend that you speak to your employer and say, this is what I'm proposing, these are the hours I'm going to work, um, just as a way of getting that extra income in. So we don't recommend any moonlighting, that's what That's right, saying. yeah. I would just, uh, just be careful, yeah. Yes. Um, another question we've had in from the mumblers, I'm returning to work soon. Um, will my company have to offer me flexible working conditions? Well, the question about have to, it can be a bit of a misconception, mm -hmm. I think. You know, a lot of, we do get this query a lot that people think, you know, I can return and I've got the right to flexible working. That's not technically correct. You do have the right to request right. to work flexibly. And again, there is a process to go through. Usually what I'd recommend is you sort of set that out in writing, you know, give examples of what that, you know, change may be. So for example, if you used to work five days, you might want to knock down to three days how you would, you know, the reason for that, primarily it might be childcare responsibilities and how that might impact on your colleagues. Right, and I suppose it'll very much depend on what sort of work you do as well, where you can work from. I think we've all got very used to, or many of us have got used to working from home over the last few years because of COVID, yeah. but it's not necessarily the case with every employer, is it, that that's a, a possibility? But I guess the reality of, a, of having a newborn and a young child is, is, you know, working from home is a bit of a, speaking from experience, it's not the I know. it's not the easiest to have uh, little yeah. ones running around in the background. So yeah, you've got to take that on board. So, yeah. but again, um, also it, it, it's what works best for, for everybody involved. Yeah, and I think also, I suspect I look at it from a company point of view as well, because Mumble is a small business. Obviously you want to be a responsible employer and do the best by your employees, but I think I've heard certainly from other people whilst out and about that there's that concern, can the business afford it? Um, can we offer it? Do we have to offer it? So it's interesting to hear um, both sides really. Yeah, well, again, as I mentioned, it's got to work for both parties. Mm -hmm. um, with flexible working you have to there is a process to go through i'd always recommend as an employer never just disregard it from the outset Absolutely. consider it um go through have the meeting with the employee discuss you know how that could work 
if it is a case that maybe it doesn't work, you've got there's certain reasons that you can rely on as an employer to reject that request. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, like you say, it's got to work for the business as well. So especially with small employers who are reliant on, on um, individuals, you've got to make sure that there is a compromise, but yeah. um, do ensure that you go through a proper process yeah, in considering those requests. Total sense. Um, another question we've had in from the mumblers is, I've been told you cannot be made redundant whilst on maternity leave. Is that correct? Um, again, it's similar to the flexible working one. It can be a bit of a misconception. Um, fortunately, you can still be made redundant. Right. But the, the positive news is that you do have enhanced rights right. during a redundancy process. Um, just to give you an example of if you are, for example, selected for redundancy, um, part of any redundancy process an employer looks has to look at okay ways to avoid that redundancy including is there any alternatives that they could do um, and in that scenario the the employee whether they're on maternity or pregnant they would have an enhanced right to be offered that role first or at least have first refusal on that right. on that role right. so that's reassuring to know because i do feel like again from my own experience that vulnerability when you're away from the office yeah. you know, is it happening without you without consultation so that's quite reassuring i um, would advise just to add to that i would be very careful as an employer you know to if you for example select somebody for redundancy and it transpires the only reason you're selecting them is because they are pregnant or they are you know on maternity there could be a real risk of a discrimination claim mm. on that basis because oh, sounds reasonable if that is the case yeah well obviously if and they went through to a dismissal it would be un automatically unfair so again employers recommendation is be very careful when you're going through that process and do seek advice on it before you do it yeah and just rewinding back from that then i suppose if you're um, applying for a job um are, is an employer allowed to ask if you're pregnant or if you're planning a family for a woman of a certain age? Yeah, well, again, it's 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 a reality of business, I think, and you know, it's it's something that does come up a lot. Um, what I would be very mindful is, where possible, you know, yes, there is a bit of forward planning, mm -hmm. um, but be very careful about how you ask that. Mm -hmm. If you do ask it at all, mm -hmm. you know, avoid the question if you can. There may be an assumption made of. Um, women at a certain age may be looking to start a family but you know factor that in for your own planning and don't necessarily come out with it maybe at interview stage um, because it could get you in hot water. Definitely and from my own experience women of a certain age are the best ones to employ. We're entirely made up of those. <laughs> but it is a, it's, a, it's a really good point because I think you know and see it there's so much talent lost through mm -hmm. you know mums who want to come back to work They've got the experience, they've got the, you know, know-how and they could really hit the ground running. And I think, you know, speaking to employers out there, you've got to think about the bigger picture of the talent that they, you know, the, what they can bring in experience-wise, because unfortunately there are a lot of, um, you know, I, I hate to say employers that may not look at, you know, this sort of, we can't offer the flexibility or we cannot. Yeah. Um, allow them in, back in because it just doesn't work for us. Yeah, well, it's short-sighted. Definitely, if it fits within the business needs, I think maybe that attitude's a bit of an old-fashioned attitude these days. Or you hope that that's totally, an old-fashioned totally. attitude these days. Um, and just, I'd like to touch on, if possible, things like adoption leave, fostering leave, and you mentioned, um, well, I would say parental leave for fathers. Yeah. In brief, what what are those um, compared to maternity leave? Yeah, well, just uh, I suppose to give you a, a recap, we've sort of spoken about maternity leave. There's a similar um, sort of rights uh, with regards to adoption leave. Again, similar processes, and you could get statutory adoption pay, and that's where you're you're going through the process potentially of adopting a child. Um, similar as I say, to the maternity leave and pay mm -hmm. requirements. There is um, introduction of shared parental leave, right. which is highly complex and it is difficult for employers to get their head around. But in essence, that's where mum and dad can, or mum and mum could split the, the, the leave period. Obviously you would, the common scenario is where both um, both parents are working for different employers. Yeah. So it allows them to effectively take that extra you know leave whereas possible you know currently paternity leave for a dad uh, or soon to be um, their leave is limited you know it can only be two weeks and then other options 
beyond that might be taking unpaid parental leave or like I said, the shared parental leave might be an option there. So. Okay. And so with, um, with parental leave for a, a expecting father, how far ahead do they have to give notification? Because presumably if you don't know when your partner's about to go into labour, do you have to pre-book it like you would a holiday or can it be fairly nice? Yeah, well, again, just on the paternity leave, similar sort of, I guess, from that point of view, at least you're looking at least sort of 28 days mm. in advance. Um, you know, again, key to this really is communication. Just keep the dialogue ongoing. You know, if you're an expectant father, you would be wanting to let them know maybe as soon as you can um, and, and sort of that pre-planning. Yeah. Because it is a short period of time as well, you Special. might want a wee bit of flexibility on that. So, you know, rather than it start starting on X date and the baby doesn't arrive till Y date, then, you know, that might eat, eat into your paternity leave period. Mm-hmm. But yeah, a bit of flexibility, but always says as far as far in advance as you can. Yeah, and presumably in conversation with your employer, if, if you felt that two weeks wasn't enough, you could then maybe request annual leave paid or unpaid leave. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, yeah, common common way of doing it, as I say, just to extend that period of time. Mm-hmm. That's been fantastic, thank you ever so much, that's loads of information. No worries, thank well thank you for having me. My pleasure.